Hi. There's actually a very big crowd. <laughs> Have you ever had one of those moments like David had when at the end of the day you go to your bed and then you realize out of all the things that you have in your life, out of all the possessions, out of all the achievements that you have, you think back and then you realize you're still missing one more thing. Something that you think you lack and you desire very much to have. Something that not money nor achievements can get you. Today, I will be sharing with you a story about a man who could have everything he could ever want because he was rich. But not only that, this man is also young, like our youth, and he is also very influential, a ruler. And so, allow me to explain to you how he will learn how to get this thing that he desires, as well as how he will learn that Attachment to possession is a hindrance to total surrender and salvation. Our title today is Wanting But Not Willing. Our passage is found in Mark 10, verse 17 to 31. Verse 17 says, As Jesus started on his way, a man ran up to him and fell on his knees before him. Good teacher, he asked, what must I do? to inherit eternal life. So now from these two verses, 17 and 18, we realize that this rich young man, the very thing that he desires to have is this thing called eternal life. But what is eternal life? Eternal life doesn't mean living on earth forever, but instead it means life after death with God in heaven. And the man wanted to have this eternal life. So Jesus proceeds to tell him in the next few verses how he can get this. Verse 19 says, You know the commandments. Do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not give false testimony. Do not defraud. Honor your father and mother. And being the rich young ruler, he is very faithful to keep the law. And so in the next verse, we will see how he responds to what Jesus says. Verse 20 says, Teacher, he declared, all these things I have kept since I was a boy. The rich young man knew that the person to ask about eternal life is Jesus. Usually when we want to ask someone about something, we would go to someone who is an expert of that field. We wouldn't go to someone who doesn't know anything about it. But then this rich young man knew that the person to ask about eternal life is Jesus himself so that he could get the answer that he wanted. The right answer so he was probably pleased with himself because he had kept all of them he didn't lie didn't steal he didn't do anything that Jesus had listed up for him but instead of us leaving for example our teacher says oh yeah you got this answer correct or yeah you got this correct but instead of us saying oh okay thank you and then leaving this young man he stayed on as if he was waiting for something else. Maybe he was waiting for a pat in the back from Jesus. Or maybe, good job, rich young ruler. We did all of the things. Or maybe he was looking for a second list. But what he says in the next verse is something that I think he didn't really expect. It says here, Jesus looked at him and loved him. One thing you lack. Now, out of all the things that he has done, Jesus goes on to say, you still need one more thing. Just one more thing to get that, in, that eternal life that you are desiring the most, that you want to have. Just one more thing to inherit that eternal life. How far would you go and do something for you to be able to get that thing that you desire the most? Some of us would go to great lengths. For example, if you really want to get an A for an exam, we would stay up the night before until like 3, 4 a.m. just to finish our, our practice papers. That's how we would go. That's how far we would go in order to try to get that A that we want. So Jesus here says, 
one thing you lack. He just needs one more to inherit the eternal life. He is so close to getting it. He just needs one more. Jesus says, go sell everything you have and give to the poor. And you will have treasures in heaven. Then come follow me. How far would we go if we are told of this? If Jesus goes on to tell us, Jezreel, go and sell everything that you have. Give it to the poor, and then you can come and follow me. And then you can go and have your eternal life with me in heaven. Would we really lay out all the things that we have done on earth, all the possessions that we have, all our iPads, iPhones, all our Mac computers, all our achievements that we worked so hard for, just to trade it for this eternal life that he really wanted. He was asked to sell his possessions. The exchange that Jesus was asking for is for him to sell and to follow him. What do you think he did? The next verse it says, At this the man's face fell. He went away sad because he had great wealth. The rich young ruler left. Jesus was conversing with him and so he was asking Jesus how can I get eternal life and Jesus proceeds to tell him the things that he needed and then when he heard this he felt sad initially we read how this very same man was running towards Jesus and normally during those days people don't run because it's very hot but the man was running towards Jesus because he really wanted to know and at this we saw how he just left he decided he couldn't really leave the possessions that he has here on earth in exchange for something that he really wanted, the eternal life that he wants. In message version, this is translated to, the man's face clouded over. This was the last thing he expected to hear. And he walked off with a heavy heart. He was holding on tight to a lot of things and not about to let go. He was sad because he has a lot of possessions. He was holding on tight to a lot of things. He was so attached to his possessions here on earth and he wasn't about to just leave it. He wasn't just about to go and sell it. Attachment to possession is a hindrance to total surrender and salvation. The rich young man asked how he can get eternal life, how he can be saved, how he can receive this salvation from Jesus. And Jesus told him the things that he needed to do. The man went away because he decided he really couldn't do it after all. This is the last straw. He drew the line right here. He couldn't proceed on and step forward. So which one did the man value more? I think we all know that he valued his possession more than the eternal life that he really wanted in the first place. But Jesus didn't force him as he left. Jesus didn't force him to, no, come back, uh, I'll change it for you. No, Jesus just let him leave. Jesus didn't force him. Verse 23 says, Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. And again, in verse 24, it says, the disciples were amazed at his words. But Jesus said again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. Now this very same phrase is repeated twice. And it means that it's very important. Usually when we have things to do at home or even in school, our teacher would repeat it again and again until we remember. And so Jesus here repeats this very same tw uh, phrase twice. Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. But Jesus doesn't stop here. He continues on with verse 25 saying, It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. Now who here hasn't seen a needle at all? I brought a needle here, which I doubt you can see from afar. So, this is not a needle, by the way. This is where you poke the needle. So this, this small thing here, where this thread is attached to, 
is the needle. Can you see how small it is? You can barely poke your finger through it, let alone this needle. It took like quite a while to really put the needle through. And for you guys who has done it, you know how hard it is. So Jesus was emphasizing on how hard it is for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. We all know how impossible it is for a camel to go through this small hole here. So for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God, it is completely hopeless. And if you are thinking that very same thing right now, that it is completely impossible for anyone to enter the kingdom of heaven because of this very same phrase that Jesus said, then you are not alone. Because disciples whom Jesus were with during that time said this. The disciples were even more amazed and said to each other, who then can be saved? During those times, if you have a lot of money, you are considered very blessed by the Lord. They would um, think that being rich means that you are seen by the Lord and the Lord will pour out blessings upon blessings on you. Also, being rich means that you can do anything that you wanted because you have the means to do it. You have the money. You can just easily spend on things. And it's the same case for the rich man. Here in Singapore, you might think, how does this relate to me? I'm not, I'm not you know, I'm not rich. I'm not living in a bungalow. I don't have a car. But then, here in Singapore, the context is a little bit different. The government or any financial research company would usually label someone as rich when you have a refrigerator at home or a washing machine. That's how simple things are here. And I learned that in my school. Here you can, you can think of, oh, I have that at home. I have, you know, I have all these two necessary things at home, but I'm not rich. But then again, if we think back at the things that we spend on, for example, nowadays, it's very easy for us to buy in excess. If you already have like one bag, oh, you see another one, oh, you still go and get it. Or if you have already so many pair of shoes, you still want another one. It's very easy for us to just spend, even though we don't necessarily need what we want. For example, we have iPhone 6. It's working perfectly fine. But then we hear the news of iPhone 7. And then we will, oh, okay, I, I must get this phone. I, I must queue up the next day so that I can get it immediately. You know, like you would spend, you would go this far just to get that one thing that you really want. But in the rich man's case, he just left. The next verse says, Jesus looked at them and said, With man, this is impossible, but not with God. All things are possible with God. In this verse, Jesus emphasizes that our strength, strength alone is not enough. It has to come from God. We realize that it is absolutely impossible for any of us to enter the kingdom of God because if a rich man couldn't do it and he is blessed by God during those times, if you lived in that, in that time, you are very blessed by God. They think that you are very faithful to God and that's why He will bless you. But if they themselves can't enter the kingdom of God, then why? Then how about us? No amount of money or good works can save anyone of us. Just look at the rich young ruler. But God wants us to have eternal life with Him in heaven. And He knows that the standards of entering heaven is so high that none of us can reach it. So what did He decide to do? He sent his one and only son, Jesus Christ, someone who is perfect, someone who had given up his riches in heaven for us, someone who gave up his seat on the throne to help us enter the kingdom of God. It was all made possible through him. And how did you do this? He came down to earth, someone who is perfect became human, he reached out for us. He himself initiated it. No one prompted it. No one forced him. He did it by his own. Our sins are punishable by death. He died on the cross for our sins because that is the only way that we can inherit eternal life. 
He doesn't want us to go to hell because they're suffering. So he sacrificed himself instead. This is out of his great love for us. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. Not by works so that no one can boast. God allowed us to have eternal life for free as a gift. Not something that we can buy. We cannot gain eternal life through works or by buying it. The price for eternal life is life itself. The young man thought that he could enter the kingdom of God by doing all good things. He thought that he could still hold on to his possessions on earth. And he thought that he could have his wealth and eternal life at the same time. But we can't serve both God and money. If we focus on money or our possessions here on earth, we leave God out of the equation because we become self-reliant. We know that we have money that to spend, and so we, our security goes to our money. We totally leave God out of it. But if we focus on God, we are assured that He will provide for us. We don't really care if we have nothing. We know that God will give it to us. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. If we focus on our treasures here on earth, or our money, our possessions, our hearts will be focused on these things as well. And since we cannot bring our possessions to heaven with us, our hearts will remain on earthly things. So how can we enter the kingdom of God if we are still holding on to the possessions of this world? It's like saying, once you graduate out of primary school, usually you won't use your textbook at all. But in this case, it's like saying, wanting to go to secondary school with your primary textbook still in your bag. Where's the logic in that? Why would you want to bring something from your primary school, your textbooks, to secondary school? Now, one of Jesus' disciples tells him this. Then Peter spoke up. We have left everything to follow you. To those who may not know, Peter and a few others were fishermen. All the 12 disciples left everything that they had, their homes, their families, their livelihood, just to follow Jesus. And they don't really carry anything else but the very same clothes they're wearing around as they travel. And so maybe Peter was concerned. So he wanted to know what about them? What about those people who decided to follow him and leave everything behind? What will happen to them then? If people who have everything can enter the kingdom of God, then what about those who have nothing? What about those who doesn't really have anything that they hold on to on earth? During those times, they really think that those who are faithful to God are the ones blessed. Therefore, they're very rich. So they associated being rich with being blessed by God. And so they were thinking if those who are rich, those who are faithful to God, don't get to enter the kingdom of heaven, then what about those who are considered not rich? But Jesus goes on to assure Peter in the next few verses, says, Truly I tell you, Jesus replied, No one who has left home or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for me and the gospel will fail to receive a hundred times as much in this present age. Homes, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, and fields, and with them persecution, and in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last first. We're all collectors in this world. As we go older, our collections of grades, possessions, money, achievements, shoes, bags, clothes, you know, they all just pile up, and the pile grows. This was something I drew back in 2013 Christmas. To those who can't really see it, on the top, what's this? Top left, top left, it says, I have nothing. And so in the beginning, we all have nothing. And then slowly, God just opens up the floodgates of heaven and blesses us with so many things that we are able to get for ourselves. We're able to have good grades, our parents are able to work, therefore we have all the things that we have. There will really be a time where we realize that these things start to disappear. Because nothing on this earth is really eternal. 
sometimes you need to empty yourself to see something far greater. When we receive things, our love for the giver shifts to our love for the gifts. And slowly, we detach ourselves from the giver and we attach ourselves to the gifts. We start to love the gifts more than the giver himself. And so we cling on to the things that we have. Our attachment to possession is a hindrance to total surrender and salvation. Because of all the things that we have here on earth, it prevents us from letting go and receiving eternal life. Just like if we're to play on a monkey bar, for example. You know how from this point you want to get across, right? To, you want to go to the other side of the monkey bar. And so you hold on. But if you don't let go of this side, reach out and grab to the next bar, you're never really going to move. We have to let go of our attachment to this world and to the possessions that we have because it is preventing us from reaching out and grabbing the next bar. It is preventing us from having total surrender and salvation. It's preventing us from having that eternal life with God in heaven. It hinders us from having total surrender and salvation. So I challenge all of us today to look into our lives and see what are the things that we are holding on to very dearly. What are some things that we think we can't live without? What are some things that we try to keep for ourselves and we try to hold on to and let it go? I challenge all of us here to think about what are these things that we hold on to. I challenge for us to let it go. And slowly, God will give us something back in return. God will give you something in return for all the things that you will let go. Jesus assures us that we will receive a hundred times as much. He will give us homes, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, and fields. Just look around you. This can be your spiritual family, your spiritual brothers and sisters. Homes will be opened for you. But Jesus also mentions that life won't always be easy. He says, and with them persecutions. He warns us that with this, these things comes persecution. But it's also for our good because he is trying to shape us to the very person that he wants us to be. And he assures us of how he will give us this eternal life in the age to come. Eternal life to spend with him in heaven. Now, if we were to compare our lives here on earth and our lives up there in heaven with God, it is so much shorter. We spend all, all our lives trying to think of ways how to live here on earth, but what about our lives after death? What about our lives after we die? Our lives here on earth is so much shorter than the forever we were to have, than the forever that God has planned for us. Jesus gave us the choice. I challenge you to let go because attachment to possession is a hindrance to total surrender and salvation.